When it comes to cinematic horn writing and video game music, there are few games which can compare to Jason Graves' soundtrack for the 2013 reboot of Tomb Raider. Celebrating its 10th anniversary this year, Tomb Raider explores the origin story of Laura Croft, a fearless archaeologist and adventurer who served as the protagonist in the original series. In the game, Laura is a young archaeology graduate searching for the lost Japanese kingdom of Yamatai. Also on the expedition are Sam Nishimura, her best friend and a descendant of the people of Yamatai, and Conrad Roth, a family friend, mentor to Lara, and former Royal Marine. However, while sailing through the dangerous Dragon's Triangle, their boat is sunk by an unnaturally strong storm, and they become stranded on an island. Lara and her friends are quickly captured by the violent Solari Brotherhood, a cult who worship the Sun Queen Himiko. Lara manages to escape, but is forced to kill one of her attackers, leaving her shocked and terrified. Laura manages to reunite with Roth, who, although injured and unable to climb the island's radio tower himself to call for help, manages to restore Laura's own confidence. After overcoming the Solari and reaching the top of the radio tower, Laura successfully makes contact with a pilot. The expedition team's morale is short-lived, however, as each pilot who attempts to rescue them is struck down by lightning. Laura believes there's something supernatural about the island, but the rest of the group does not believe her. As she attempts to rescue Sam, she realizes that the Solari are recreating the Sun Queen's ascension ritual, and have chosen Sam as Himiko's successor. Sam and Laura manage to escape with the rest of the group, but Roth is fatally wounded, protecting Laura. While the rest of the surviving group repairs a boat to flee the island, Laura discovers that the source of the island's supernatural power is Himiko's soul, trapped in her old body and awaiting the Solari's tribute. She returns and finds that Sam has once again been abducted by the Solari. Laura pursues the leader of the Solari to the top of the Sun Queen's monastery, guarded by both Solari and the Sun Queen's undead samurai guardians, the Oni. She defeats the Solari and destroys Himiko's body, saving Sam and returning the island to peace. The score for Tomb Raider differs from Graves' most famous work on the Dead Space franchise. Although it leans into his history as a drummer and horror music composer, with frequent use of found sounds and newly commissioned percussion instruments, Graves makes equal use of the orchestra as a narrative device, and particularly the French horn. When composing the score, Graves began with Laura's main theme, which was then developed into a suite of melodic material for him to use throughout the game. According to Graves, his suite showed him both what was working for the game and also what not to use, relying on less musical information to more creatively tell the story. The next most prominent theme is Roth's theme, which is a melodic and harmonic sibling to Lara's. As both themes share the same harmonic progression, Graves frequently layers a solo flute above the horns, performing both themes simultaneously while the two characters interact. Finally, the evil on the island is given its own theme, most directly correlated to the Oni and mentions of Queen Himiko. The Oni's theme is jagged and chromatic, and is almost always performed by stopped horns, leading to an ugly, buzzy, and downright creepy effect. Throughout the game, Graves presents these leitmotifs through the horn to tell the story of Laura's emotional maturation from a scared and helpless student to a fearless explorer against a backdrop of unnatural evil. His score is cleanly divided into three major sections, bookended by opportunities for emotional growth. These sections are the opening of the story up until Laura summits the island, from the failed rescue attempt until Roth's death, and finally, Lara's unraveling of the island's mysteries and eventual victory over the Solari and Queen Himiko. In an interview with Graves, he commented that the design team wanted Lara to come across as vulnerable, inexperienced, and unsure of herself at the opening of the game. 
At this point in the story, she is desperately fighting for her life and unsure of how she will make it off the island, if at all. Graves' orchestrations reflect Laura's inner turmoil, replacing bombastic horns with delicate cello, piano, and oboe. The first major usage of the horn is actually a subtle introduction of the Oni's theme, directly before Laura's fatal confrontation with a member of the Solari. The horn is finally introduced in a more obvious way as Laura reaches Roth, performing an unaccompanied rendition of Roth's theme as a musical depiction of his calming and reassuring presence. Roth, I'm coming! Thank God you're alive! Eventually, Laura's theme subtly enters an octave higher in the flute as her self-assurance returns. Inspired by Roth's pep talk, Laura manages to scale the island's radio tower. Near the top, a solo horn rendition of Laura's theme is suddenly morphed into the Oni theme by a cluster of stopped horns as a supernaturally strong gust of wind almost knocks her off. However, she manages to hang on and reach the top, where she is greeted by the first climactic rendition of her theme by an entire section of triumphant horns. <laughs> This moment onwards, Laura achieves a sense of inner strength and independence which enables her to rescue her kidnapped friends from the Solari. Her resilience is tested, however, when Roth is killed during their escape. Graves asserts that music is the best way of making an emotional moment happen in a game, and Roth's death is probably the single most emotional and vulnerable point of Laura's journey. Roth's theme, formerly presented by a noble, unaccompanied horn, is now performed by a bombastic horn ensemble while Laura's theme soars as a counterpart. As Roth gives Laura his final words of encouragement, Graves reduces the orchestration to a pure and simple duet between the flute and the horn. I can't do this without you. I'm sorry, Laura. I'm sorry. You can do this. As Laura sits alone later, planning her next move, Roth's solo returns as a musical depiction of his guidance. After his death, Roth's theme becomes amalgamated into Laura's. She is now the de facto protector of the expedition. This shift is best exemplified when the group plans how to fix their escape vessel. Laura steps in to offer help as she arrives, but they are unable to hoist a heavy crate out of the broken ship. Jonah, give the hoist a try. This has got to be our best chance, right? We've got to try. I'm glad you decided to join us, Lara. What can I do to help? Help Jonah. As soon as Lara suggests another method of lifting the box, her theme, which had been passively wafting in the background, crystallizes into a brief recapitulation of Roth's theme. Shit. We'd be able to lift him more smoothly with some kind of block and tackle. Right. We should be able to fashion one from some pulleys. There might be someone there rigging we 
can use. I'll check it out. Be careful, Laura. With her newfound courage and determination, Laura sneaks into an abandoned military outpost, reaching the cave systems within it and discovering the mummified body of Himiko's storm guard general. As she reads the general's suicide note and discovers the true cause of the island's supernatural powers, Graves further develops the Oni theme. Instead of using purely stopped horns, Graves adds open horns into the texture to illustrate how Laura has grown from seeing the island as an impenetrable threat into an enemy which can be conquered. As Laura and the remaining survivors mount a rescue operation to save Sam and destroy Himiko, Graves comments that the Whatever music takes here. a definite turn towards optimism. A shot. The first major example of this goal. comes when Laura convinces the group to head into the that. island instead of attempting a futile escape. Although the horns are relatively quiet, that. they confidently and insistently Look, float above an energetic percussion group. Believe me, I do, but the fight's not over yet. I'm not asking you to believe, Reyes. I'm asking you to trust. Okay. Let's get this thing in the water. The same texture occurs when Laura splits from the group, with the horns veering into the Oni's theme as she warns them of the dangers that they'll be facing without her. I need you here, taking out as many of those bastards as you can. There won't just be the Solari either. There'll be others, Samurai, the Queen Stormguard. Look, anything that's not me or Sam, shoot it. Laura races through the monastery, overcoming waves of Oni and Solari alike. She reaches the ziggurat within the monastery, but Himiko's supernatural storms force her to scale it from the outside. Although the storm threatens to blow her off the ziggurat, she holds on, supported by a bombastic rendition of her theme by the brass, accompanied by rhythmic strings in 7 8 time. After defeating the leader of the Solari, Laura impales Himiko's body, destroying her curse and freeing Sam. Himiko's defeat is echoed by an increasingly desperate rendition of the Oni theme, which melts away into a solo horn rendition of Laura's theme. As Sam regains consciousness, the flute enters and takes over from the horn, suggesting that Laura has achieved the capacity to reassure and instill confidence in her friends the same way that Roth had done for her. Graves' transformation of character-driven motifs provides a new layer of depth to Laura's journey which the sound design and script are not able to achieve alone. By subtly adjusting the orchestration throughout the game and withholding the sound of the open horn in the first act, Graves allows the player to connect Laura's growth with the sound of the horn and its cinematic connotation of adventurers and heroes. His distinct, concise, and memorable themes allow players to subconsciously engage with the musical narrative even when distracted by visual and kinesthetic elements of the gameplay. Finally, the passage of courage from Roth to Lara, and then from Lara to Sam, portrayed by the flute and horn duet, adds an important and nuanced layer of parallelism into the final scene which the script is unable to portray. The intimate connection Graves creates between Tomb Raider's narrative arc and its soundtrack is rarely found in interactive media. As a result, the 2013 reboot will remain memorable and relevant for many decades to come. <laughs>